Hot flashes, insomnia, weight gain, mood swings, anxiety, all of these are symptoms of perimenopause and menopause, and they can wreak havoc on a woman's life. Well, today we're talking to Dr. Tori Hudson about hormone replacement therapy and whether it's a safe option for the management of menopausal problems. Now, we talk freely about puberty, we talk about menstruation, we talk about childbirth. Women's reproductive health is studied, written about, and celebrated not only by scientists and doctors, but amongst women themselves. And yet the conversation about the menopause is still muted. And that's exactly why we thought it was important to invite our resident specialist on women's health issues, Dr. Tori Hudson, to join us for a two-part series about how to manage menopause. In this program, we'll be taking a deep dive into hormone replacement therapy and whether it's a safe option for the management of menopausal symptoms. Welcome back to Nutramedica, Dr. Hudson. It's lovely to see you. Ditto, lovely to see you too, Brian. Okay, so just as a reminder, before we um, sort of get uh, into reviewing these hormonal therapies, let's just remind ourselves of some of the terms and some of the symptoms uh, that we deal with with menopause. Right. So uh, perimenopause is that transition time that can go on generally for several years. And then menopause, at least in a normal natural process, um, it's officially the definition of 12, after 12 consecutive months of not having a menstrual period. And then everything after that is post-menopause. Um, but of course, at surgical menopause or medication-induced menopause uh, or having a hysterectomy only, those are kind of different scenarios um, that have some different needs, uh, both symptom-wise and, and management-wise. Uh, the classic symptoms are hot flashes, night sweats, that change in the menstrual cycle in, the, in perimenopause, mood changes, that can be depression, anxiety, irritability, uh, vulval vaginal changes, and uh, what else? There's 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 one more that's sort of on the classic list um, that I want to mention. But there, of course, are things that are not so classic. Uh, yeah, the one other thing on the classic list is sleep disturbances, and that can be related to a hot flash or not related to a hot flash. And then there are many other changes that are not as classic but they are plenty common and plenty you might say normal uh you know body aches sexual function fatigue changes in the eyes changes in the tooth loss and gums uh, skin aging uh, dryness wrinkling acne headaches cognitive changes changes in weight distribution uh, even hearing de uh, changes hearing can decline the voice be can become a little uh, deeper, and then some hair changes, including rogue hairs and, and hair thinning. So I think that's a pretty good list. And when, when people, especially our patients, hear that list, they kind of like go, oh my God, this sounds like it's going to be terrible. But it's, you know, it ranges anywhere from mild to severe. It ranges anywhere from brief to long term. Uh, the, the, the vulval vaginal changes are the, the area I like to highlight. It is the a dominant area where it it is a symptom that gets worse with time so okay. it you do need to keep it from so treatment of that issue anything related to vulvo vaginal atrophy or the what's called the genital urinary syndrome of menopause is not only improving the symptoms related to that in the moment but it's actually preventing uh, problems in the future and do you see changes in libido as part of this whole thing yeah, sexual function changes include uh, lower libido, lower arousal, less orgasmic. And then, of course, there can be pain with touch and penetration related to thinness, dryness, narrowing of the uh, opening to the vagina. So all, all that is included in the, in the sexual function changes. And then just while we're here, these are sort of the, all the quality of life things, um, because, but then there's the diseases associated that are increased with aging and increased risk of uh, related to postmenopause and aging, like heart disease and osteoporosis and dementias. Those are kind of the big three, but they're not the only three. 
So, um, all right, so those, those symptoms would be your primary indication for hormone therapy, presumably, or do you have a, a short list for that? So the, the fundamental issues to uh, give hormones is improving quality of life and or disease prevention, like osteoporosis and fractures, and or disease treatment, like osteoporosis. Um, so those are sort of the three buckets for which we need to address, consider hormones or not. The, in terms of the first bucket and quality of life, it's more, it's usually a matter of the severity of her symptoms for me determines whether or not I'm going to recommend we start at herbal nutraceuticals and work our way up if we're not successful, or we start here with hormones and work our way down or hormones and just stay there because that's what is needed uh, to improve her quality of life, let alone perhaps for her disease prevention and disease treatment. So it's no one scenario. It's that, and this is sort of like the a main message I might want to get across with my colleagues about hormone prescribing is this, our medicine is by in principle individualized, but it, it has very particular meaning in menopause, this individualized risk assessment, this individual risk for hormones assessment, this individual assessment of her quality of life issues, disease prevention needs, disease management needs. All these have very specific uh, factoids <laughs> related right. to the hormones, do's and don'ts. And um, and so this is an area that really requires study because it's a robust area of research. It's a robust area of confusion. Um, it's not safe for everybody, but yet it is an incredibly safe medicine uh, for most everybody. Um, and when done properly, meaning, you know, you know, and there's, again, certain factoids to that. And there's patients that we are considered contraindication for a systemic estrogen therapy, for example. A woman with a breast cancer history, that's considered a contraindication. However, a woman because, with a well, history let me, of... Let me, yeah. let me just stop you there for a second, because I, I do, I want to go, you know, you, you, said it, you, you said it yourself, this is an area that requires, you know, robust study. And that's exactly why we came to you, uh, because you have to be an authority on this. Um, and that's why we're putting this program together. So let's, let's just go step by step here. Um, let's start with um, the different kinds of hormone therapy. And we'll definitely get to the personalization and we'll get to the risks and benefits. Okay. But let's just start with what are the different types of hormone therapy that, that you're using? Okay. So uh, um, there's more than one way to answer this, but I want to start with there are, you can give estrogen only. Okay. You can give estrogen with a progestogen every day, or you can give estrogen every day and a progestogen half the month. You can, you can give uh, estrogen with a progestogen with the testosterone. Uh, so, and then there's, so there's all these combinations and then there's different deliveries, right? There's, is it a cream? Is it a patch? Is it a pill? Is it a sublingual lozenge? Is it a pell? Is it an injection? Is it a pellet? Is it a vaginal delivery? And then there's the actual hormone compounds themselves. Is this estrogen from the uh, is it a conjugated estrogen from the urine of pregnant mares called right. Premarin? Or is it a uh, synthetic estrogen? Uh, or is it, because Premarin is technically a natural estrogen, it's just not bioidentical to humans. And then there's, so we have the, the natural substances that are not bioidentical, like Premarin. We have the synthetic estrogens and progestins and testosterone. And then we have what's called compound, uh, we have bioidentical estrogens, bioidentical progesterone and bioidentical testosterone. And then we have, and bioidentical 
as probably everybody on the call knows, are hormones that are extracted. The, the, a compound is extracted from a plant, and then that compound is made into a hormone in a manufacturing laboratory that's biochemically identical to the human hormone. So estradiol, testosterone, progesterone. Um, but, and those bioidentical hormones can be acquired from a compounding specialty pharmacy or from some are also available big pharma from a regular pharmacy. There are some bioidentical hormones in big pharma. And then there are some proprietary nutraceutical type companies that have some, some doses generally of creams uh, that, that can be acquired as well. I hope you enjoyed that highlight from a recent program on Nutramedica. If you want to get access to our full length shows, and live interactive events, you'll need to register as a healthcare professional at Nutramedica.org. To stay up to date with our latest programs, go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. We'll see you soon at Nutramedica.org.